Hi guys, it is March 27, 2018. A former Supreme Court Justice writes an op-ed for the New York Times calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. Two things I want to say. One, when an individual trumps principle with personality, they will never be principled. When we put people on a pedestal and because they have a certain position like a Supreme Court Justice and we allow that individual to influence our thinking or to allow them to think for us, that will create an awful lot of trouble for individuals. You have an awful lot of Trump supporters still arguing that he is doing great things for America and he's not. And he has, just like all the rest, fooled you lied to you, betrayed you. But when you put personality above principle, you will not see that. Because the personality is far more important. So you will keep them on a pedestal and you will do everything in your power, no matter how absurd, to argue that that personality is doing a great thing, especially when you are someone who wants somebody else to fix things and you have rendered yourself powerless and these people powerful, that will get you nowhere but only in far worse circumstance. We find ourselves in a circumstance in this country where we have been taken over. Centralized power is in our federal government. Our branches of government no longer exist. And our Supreme Court justices, along with our presidents, along with our representatives in the House, along with our senators, have sold us down the river a long time ago. And they continue to sell us further and further down that river. Millions of people are already suffering the consequences of being sold out. So for all of the Trump supporters who are still arguing that he's great, he's going to fix things. He's going to make America great again. I really hope that you reevaluate your beliefs because that's all they are. Beliefs. You're not going on facts. This is a guy who said, grab the guns. We'll deal with due process later. You don't want a president like that. Now, I would love it if everybody would just say to hell with the presidents, to hell with the Supreme Court justices, to hell with the federal government, and begin to self-rule themselves within their communities. Do I <laughs> foresee that happening in my lifetime? No, I don't. Because most Americans our children, and they look up to these people as if they're mom, mommy and daddy, and they give them that respect. And that's unfortunate. So there's an awful lot of people who believe that Supreme Court justices are just so brilliant. And wow, what a position to have when you only have nine people interpreting a document. Nine. Nine. 
for 324 million. Nine people get to determine whether or not you're going to have constitutional rights or not, whether or not you're even going to have that constitution. Nine people, this is what we have manifested here. What if those people are bought by others who want the Constitution destroyed? And we see that Constitution destroyed. But we still give respect to these people. We do have to take a look at our own self and we do have to reevaluate our beliefs and our thinking. You know, I remember in Northampton, Massachusetts when I lived there and I had a friend or I'm, I'm not even going to call her a friend, but she was within my social network and she was a friend of a friend of mine. She became the mayor of Northampton, Massachusetts, and everybody was calling, calling her the Honorable Claire Higgins. And I couldn't get that word honorable out. I just continued to call her what I always called her. I continued to relate to her as I always related to her. And boy, did that piss her off. Her ego was so enormous and I couldn't quite get up that Honorable Higgins. What was honorable about her? Not much. Was she any more honorable than any of those that she was associating with? That she was friends with? No. So why do we give these people who are supposed to be servants of the people, that kind of honor. <laughs> Why? Why do we hold them on pedestals, put them on pedestals just because they happen to... Well, Claire Higgins had almost no one running against her. She had literally like crazy people in that election for mayor. She was the only reasonable person to vote for, but that didn't make her honorable. So I hate these designations. I hate them. I have hated them my entire life. It's, it's, uh. but what we do and what that does is It just puts personality first. And principle it just gets nobody even thinks about. Principles. So John Paul Stevens is calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. The repeal, the, the entire repeal of the Second Amendment. Now we know that our Constitution is dead and we know that those in Washington, D.C., those so-called elected officials of ours, that they don't represent us and they're not elected, they are selected, they've destroyed the Constitution. The Constitution was dead decades ago. And it's the, the uh, boiling frog scenario. They begin to take away the rights incrementally so the people don't really see what is going on. The Second Amendment is truly the only thing in our Constitution that still remains. And perhaps it's because it gives a tangible right. But, but why do we... <laughs> Why have we been so utterly conditioned to 
except that a piece of paper gives us rights. Or these people called like John Paul Stevens. Why do we allow other people to determine what our rights are? Why do we allow these people to take a right and make it a privilege that can be taken away. But rights in <laughs> in our country can also be taken away. But it's only because we allow it. We allow that to happen. I read some of this op-ed piece in the New York Times and it makes me sick. It makes me sick to my stomach. John Paul Stevens, clearly a traitor. You know, we, we see treason being committed on a daily basis now and we do nothing. Rarely in my lifetime have I seen the type of civic engagement school children and their supporters demonstrated in Washington and other major cities throughout the country this past Saturday. These demonstrations demand our respect. Really? John Paul Stevens, you are clearly not seeing how there's a deliberate agenda to take away the guns. But are you part of that deliberate agenda? Now calling for the repeal of the Second Amendment. This is so sad to see. This is so sad to see. Concern that a national standing army might pose a threat to the security of the separate states led to the adoption of that amendment, of the Second Amendment, which provides that a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Today, that concern is a relic of the 18th century. Really, John? Really? It's a relic? You don't see that our government, the federal government, is now a tyranny? You don't see all of the criminal, the, the criminality, the corruption taking place? And you don't understand Clearly, the founding fathers who, well, drafted that Constitution, put in the Second Amendment, you don't understand why that Second Amendment was put in there. It was for the people to protect themselves from their government turning into a tyranny. We don't have separate states, John. We don't have a constitutional republic, John. And you were in that building, the Supreme Court, and you helped the Constitution get destroyed, John. No, I can't give these people respect. During the years when Warren Burger was our Chief Justice from 1969 to 1986, no judge, federal or state, as far as I am aware, expressed any doubt as to the limited coverage of that amendment. Well, guess what? Americans, a whole lot of Americans disagree with you, John. But because we have allowed these individuals to rule over us, they have an awful lot of power to break us. And we have given them that power. And I am so thoroughly sick of just on a daily basis watching sick 
deranged, twisted people rule over us. Repeal the Second Amendment coming from a Supreme Court justice. Not sitting, former, doesn't matter. Get rid of it. Well, we do know that Supreme Court justices have been bought and sold, so he's clearly just one of them. Or maybe in his old age, he just can't think clearly anymore. Get rid of the guns. The guns are the problem. The guns are the problem. The guns are the problem. How unbelievably stupid is that? My God, until we begin, until we begin to take back our own power and say goodbye to the federal government, until we begin to realize that, hey, we Americans, we really have not considered the root causes of anything but we just go for the quick fix, thinking it's going to be a fix, but it's no fix whatsoever because it will keep no one safe. There will just be a black market. Uh, uh, there is a black market for guns, but it will just strengthen that black market, make it more profitable. If people want to get guns, they will be able to get guns. So the, the, what's in the incredulity that I am left with is that we have these people in these positions. We have decided that they're intelligent. And then when they come out with this stuff, John Paul Stevens, repeal the Second Amendment. It, you're, you are filled with incredulity. You, how do you even, how do you even figure this out? and argue reasonably. There's almost no way to do it because you're left with, is this person, is this person truly just gone? Has his, has his brain just been infected with Alzheimer's or something? I don't know. But when you are dealing with people who want to take away, okay, I'm not for government at all. I'd like to see it gone. I'd like people to rule themselves. All right, but that is just <laughs> pie in the sky and I understand it. So we had that constitution and that, that was a document like no other document, no other people ever were given the right of self-determination, the right of self-governance. That's what that document did give us. We failed and we continue to fail to exercise our power. Instead, we became children to those who are in these positions to those that are supposed to be representing us. And frankly, all we did was vote and do nothing else. We failed to hold accountable those who were clearly corrupt, immoral, engaging in criminal behavior. We failed to hold them accountable. And when you're in a position of power and you're getting all of those people saying, oh, honorable Miss Higgins, oh, honorable this and honorable that, <sighs> your ego just explodes and you become more sick and deranged. When you're put on a pedestal,
and you're not a well human being, you are still on that low level of consciousness, and it does not matter that these Supreme Court justices, you know, that we have deemed them intelligent, and we think that they're better than us. They're not. They are so not. And you can be on the Supreme Court. You can be a justice of the Supreme Court and have a very low level of consciousness where everything is about you. And when everything's about you, then you're motivated by you, not principle. I'm sorry for going on and on. I, I just, I, I'm really, I'm so... No other people were given the power that the American people were given. And yeah, it's heartbreaking to see what has happened here. Oh yeah. I know there's an awful lot of people. Well, it's the same old, same old. There's nothing that we can do. There's nothing. How many comments do I get? There's nothing we can do. There's nothing we can do. Okay, great. Those kinds of comments just, whew. they just, I don't know, suck up all of the good energy. Those kinds of comments give permission to everybody else to think the same. The power is within each of us. Whether or not one does the work necessary to access that power, that's up to your individual choice. So we have the willfully ignorant who are choosing to not look at what is taking place. Choosing. Choosing to live their entire life as an utter lie. But then we have a lot of awake people who are choosing to believe there's nothing that we can do. Because it allows them to do nothing. It's our choice. And clearly, we have collectively made that choice over and over and over again. Easier to live a lie than do the work necessary to be guided by principle. Easier to Just applaud that personality. Doesn't matter when that personality shows you. They are such low character. They lie repeatedly. They betray you repeatedly. Doesn't matter. Because And this is going to be hard hitting. Low character supports low character. And the individual doesn't have to do a friggin' thing. They can just continue to live their life doing absolutely nothing. No work, no, none of that hard work of self-reflection or reevaluation or changing their own behavior. Yes, people of the lie, Scott Peck, laziness and narcissism. It is hitting us in the face every single day how incredibly lazy and narcissistic we are as a people. 
Ooh, and haven't I gotten some of you really pissed? Well, the truth is hard to hear. The truth is really hard to hear.